Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you had a happy Independence Day. We certainly did. We're always talking about hunting and we grilled up some elk steaks. We did have some deer backstrap and more. Stay tuned and we'll tell you about our weekend. This summer, whether you're at the range or in the field, WSI Sports' Hypertech Bamboo Tanks, Tees, and Leggings will have you covered. Visit WSISports.com and use Leah's affiliate code LLC010 for 10% off your purchase. All products are proudly made in the USA. WSI is bringing back pride in American made clothing. Again, that code is LLC010 for 10% off your order at WSISports.com. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mac Outdoors podcast, where a dynamic mother-daughter duo share their adventures, tips, and advice. I am Mia, and I'll be accompanied by the one and only daughter, Leah. It is time to get to outdoors, hunt, shoot, and spend time with family and friends. Let's get this show on the road. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another week. We are so happy that you joined us again, and we do hope that you had a great 4th of July. We kind of laid low and Leah had to work and it was super hot so we barbecued and grilled and that's about all so not too exciting here a little firework action but not too much <laughs> right Leah <laughs> yeah. yeah we're under a fire restriction so there weren't fireworks in Durango and it is a little little bit of a hush on the Independence Day celebrations in the area, right? Sadly. <laughs> Sadly, yes. But we did have a pretty good week. We um, spent our day yesterday at the trap range watching Leah shoot in 100 degree temperatures, which I did not envy whatsoever. <laughs> um, only that I had to be there in the shade, <laughs> which I suppose I didn't have to be there, but at least I was in the shade. At the trap range, you, of course, are standing out there on a concrete pad in the sun with the just blasting down. So I did feel a little sorry for Leah. She shot some good rounds and then came back and she talked about shooting another one. But we said no go because her face was flushed and I could tell she was overheated already. So she'll have to go early in the mornings before the heat rises in the future, right? That's Yes. Is that a good tip for others who want to go shoot? Like try to get out there before 10 a.m. cuz it starts to get hot around then, huh? Yes. And if you're shooting competitions, sign up early to get in one of the first groups so you're not like the fifth or sixth group shooting and then it's warm by then cuz you're waiting on all the groups before you that was always a big deal for me when shooting is I hated having to wait and then it'd be warm but they're already done and in the shade yeah and I guess that probably depends on how big the trap range is wherever you shoot you know as far as how many teams are going to be ahead of you depending on how many stations there are it definitely is an, an ordeal where Leah goes and shoots, but watching Orange Clay's bust is kind of like watching fireworks. I always enjoy that. It's pretty mesmerizing. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do you have to talk about this week, Leah? What else is exciting going on? She's looking at me, blank stare, random. If you guys could see her right now, and just picture this. Use your imagination a little bit. Mm-hmm. She's sitting in a director's style chair with her feet up on the desk, and she's got this old, random <laughs> felt. It's a, it's a chocolate brown felt cowboy hat that somebody <laughs> left behind here. It has a mule kick to it. If you don't know what a mule kick is, it means that... It, the, the crown is a little lower in the front, and it kicks up in the back, so it's taller. And this thing has seen some rodeos, I think. It's a, it's a little beat up and tattered. And <laughs> maybe that's her get into the podcast mode cat today. <laughs> is that what it is? It's going to get a little ranchy around here today. <laughs> yeah, so that's her, her get up. <laughs> I guess that's the joy of podcasting. You don't get to see. So one of these days, we're going to figure out how to get this to record and stream so you can see us while we're talking. But we haven't figured out how to do that without paying a monthly subscription to a couple things. So if you guys have any tips or hints, let us know on our Facebook pages, on other outlets. Um, one thing I want to let you guys know is I recently launched 
my t-shirt line. And actually, you can get a few other things as well. There's cups and stuff like that, um, canteens. But you can learn more about that on my Facebook page, and that's facebook.com slash Mia Ann Steins with an S on the end. We'll put a link in the show notes for you, but this series that I launched for my first one is called The Mountains Are Calling, and what all do I have in those images, Leah? Yeah, fishing, hiking, camping... I don't even know what else. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah, there's some elk, there's some deer, there's archery and rifle, and a little, like she said, a little of everything. Hopefully, it'll appeal to a lot of you. And I'm working on some other ideas also. I'm trying to get some better graphics. So, look forward to those coming in the future. And Leah, she's actually been working on finishing up her first college class. So yes. the clock is ticking. We are counting down to <laughs> her heading off to college. And it's kind of exciting, but as a parent, you know, it's kind of like, wow, like, what am I going to do when she's not here? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing you're going to do when you head up that way, Leah? Go to the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> the mountains are calling. <laughs> they are calling. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have any trips planned when you go up there? Are you gonna Are you gonna go camping, exploring? Uh, I'll probably go exploring a lot. I the outdoors is my happy place, and so I definitely want to learn the land. And who knows? I have friends that are in Canada, which is really close, and so maybe I'll get to go on some adventures up there with them and just have some fun up yeah. there that should be exciting yeah that'll be totally exciting <laughs> i look forward to getting reports back and i hope you guys listening look forward to getting reports back too because after all that's why we started the podcast was so that leah could share a bit of montana with us and give us some tips from up there right yes yes <laughs> <laughs> One thing, I've actually been reading some headlines today. I wrote a couple articles, and then I was reading the news. And I noticed up in Montana, in Canada, there are Native American or Indian tribes that are contesting the delisting of the grizzlies in Yellowstone. And they're contesting it because of their religious beliefs. So that's something we knew that the delisting would be fought by anti-hunters and stuff but that was one that I didn't expect was for the Native Americans to say they don't want them delisted because they don't agree with hunting the grizzly bears. That's interesting. I didn't ever really consider that at all but I don't think it's a huge reason. I think the safety of animals and people are a little more important than having save the bears and then realize all the other animals are gone. And like we talked about in one of our other episodes, people are getting attacked by grizzlies. And so if we don't take them off the list, more people are going to probably get hurt. Right. And the whole idea of hunting is to manage the populations, right? It's not as though we're getting rid of bears or any other animals we hunt. The whole idea is just to maintain healthy populations. I actually had a few people, I don't know that they're anti-hunters, but the few people argued with me on social media outlets. I had shared a press release about the delisting on my website and a few people didn't agree with the delisting. They said that there were 50,000 way back when and now there's only hundreds and so forth. And I think the, the disconnect is they're talking about vast spaces and we're talking about Yellowstone and they're also talking about, it's kind of like the Kaibab Forest. I mean, we teach it in hunter education. It became overpopulated and the animals started dying off. They didn't have habitat. They didn't have food. They didn't have enough. There wasn't enough there to sustain them. It's kind of what would happen if we didn't eventually hunt the grizzlies. And another thing that comes to mind is who's to say how many grizzlies are going to be allowed to be hunted you know yeah. is it going to be one three is it going to be you know who's I think people jump to the conclusion that they're just going to get slaughtered which every hunter I'm sure knows if you don't you should that that would never happen you know right so that's that's something in the news and then what other bear reports have you seen in the news 
tons. I know a lot <laughs> of my friends have been sharing bear sightings. Some of my friends are raft guides, and they've been sharing bears along the river while they're floating down fishing. And yeah. All kinds of sightings around here. That's true. I actually, when we went float fishing the other day, the guy ahead of us said he had seen this big bear and he told us the area and I was ready with my camera. I was hoping to get a glimpse of him and I didn't (laughs) see any bears, but yeah, (laughs) it's that time of year. They're out heavy and strong. And I actually was showing Leah a video earlier of a bear that in Colorado Springs area <clears throat> that broke into a man's house. It went through an open window in the middle of the night and raided his refrigerator. I actually checked all the bedrooms on that level. I don't know if it was a multi-level house, but checked the empty rooms and tore cabinet doors off and such <laughs> like that. Well, it ends up, this bear is one that on my Facebook page I shared a few weeks ago, a lady had driven into her garage, and as she opened the garage and drove in, this bear followed her vehicle in, and he was in the garage beside her vehicle, and she was videoing, and it's like, what would you do? What would you do if this bear is standing right beside your car door? Well, she videoed it and then called the Parks and Wildlife officials to come and help, which they did. It's the same bear that ended up in this man's house ransacking it. And so ultimately they put the bear down because it's become habituated. And part of this is our fault. And we know just living in the Durango area, there's tons of bears in town. And as you know, they have trash cans, special bear proof trash cans. People in town are instructed how to, you know, store their stuff so they're not attracting bears. And it does help a little bit if you be bear aware and, don't leave stuff out to attract them. Yeah, I know last year, I believe in Durango, they actually set a budget to get the neighborhoods where there was the most bear activity, got them bear-proof trash cans because it was becoming such a problem, which was, I think, pretty cool that they're at least wanting to prevent them Because I know we live kind of in a town where they want to save everything and, you know, they probably like when they see them around, but they probably don't like them trashing the neighborhood or who knows what else they're doing. Yeah, well, and that leads me to think of a story today. I had a friend came to help us fix our deck and he was telling me a story about when a bear was out back on their back deck which I knew of an instance where there was a bear in their tree and they live in t- in town in Durango, Colorado. And one time there was a bear in the tree and I'd heard about this incident because he had run outside to see what was going on and the bear actually pooped on him from up in the tree, which was kind of comical, kind of funny. But this other incident, he had went out back and he goes out and he saw bear cubs way out in his backyard. They were scurrying up a tree. Well, what had happened in his... His wife is upstairs watching from above, from the upstairs window, (laughs) and she can see everything that's going on. And he's out on their back deck, which is only like eight foot out from the house. And she can see that the mama bear is right there at the edge of the deck, just on the other side of the bush. And he's standing on the deck. So she is like four foot away from him. But since it was nighttime, she was in the shadows. He never saw her. He just saw the cubs. And he, when he saw the cubs, he knew, like, where there are babies, there must be a mom. So he went back inside and, you know, locked the doors, and eventually she and the babies went away. But that's an incident where you probably should be careful if there's bears outside, don't go out there. Because <laughs> <Like, laughs> that could have been a really bad situation. What other reports did you hear about this week? I have an, an alert, and I check deer, elk, bear, all kinds of stuff in our area, and another report was the Durango, um, oh. <laughs> the Durango SO, the sheriff's office. They actually tweeted on Twitter about a bear that on for the Fourth of July on Tuesday broke into the Durango jail. So this <laughs> bear scaled the fence, climbed over the fence, and went in. And had actually broken in. They have it on security cameras, this bear that broke into jail. And they (laughs) they made jokes about it, had the right to bear arms and all this stuff. And the bear climbed back out and left. But (laughs) (laughs) these bears are pretty curious and adventurous. (laughs) So speaking of bears, it's getting close to bear hunting time. 
we love to bear hunt. I know we have some crazy bear hunting stories that we have probably shared in past episodes. But some good tips for bear hunting. We usually like to sit a watering hole just because it's usually pretty hot still when season comes around. Bears will come all different times of the day. They don't just come at night or just come in the morning. They'll come around any time of day so it's always a good spot to sit as is at a watering hole. I know last year I sat a watering hole all day long and one of our friends harvested one there the week before and said he saw four or five other ones come in and sure enough right at dusk like it was too late to shoot. I was archery hunting was a little too dark to shoot and here comes a nice bear coming into the watering hole. (laughs) So it's always a good place to spot them because putting a stock on a bear is extremely hard to know where they're at. It is super hard where we live because the oak brush is so thick and the bears kind of build tunnels through the brush. So even if you do see one and then once you lose sight of it in the brush, it can go any direction. So it's kind of tricky if you're hunting in these thick covered areas. And that's part of why water holes, especially if you're archery hunting, if you're rifle hunting, it's a little different story because you can get a little further away, get a more expansive view. But archery hunting, it's definitely a little trickier to get close to them. A couple years ago, I actually circled a thicket and the the bear was on the other side and he eventually snuck out of there. I don't know where he went, but he was within range, but too much oak brush in the way. <laughs> So it's it's really is fun. It's a it's a good challenge. The only time we ever stocked up on a bear was on accident when we were riding into a watering hole. We were riding along this well, I think riding along a creek and we're all just kind of gabbing, messing around. We were throwing acorns at each other and just off in... What's this wee business? We. I wasn't throwing anything around. Mom, I, I wasn't gabbing. I was quiet and hunting. Mom over here was just like being all serious. But Hank and I were throwing acorns at each other and laughing because we weren't there yet. We we had a ways to go and we're throwing acorns and laughing and all of a sudden we're like oh my gosh we got real quiet and we're like stop stop there's a bear and it was a beautiful big bear yeah it was it was a gorgeous bear and we're like trying to like whisper to her like hey hey a bear and she's like, oh, they're just messing they around. They started so. throwing sticks at me to get my attention. I was in the lead, <laughs> and I was just a little perturbed because they were making a racket behind me. And then I felt things peppering me on the back of my jacket, and it was them trying to catch my attention to tell me there was a bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, hunting bloopers, there you go. There's always one or two, right? <laughs> yeah. Another time that I snuck up on one. Actually, I had shot a bear and went to go look for it. It had scurried into the brush. And as I was crawling through the brush along a little creek bed, I heard panting. The bear I had shot was like a brown bear, cinnamon brown. And I'm going through the brush and I see this bear panting, laying there, and it was a black bear. So it was clearly not the bear I had shot. And it was just laying there in the me- middle of the day trying to cool off in the spring. And so I just kind of quietly retreated and hit reverse. <laughs> I was like, wrong tunnel. Sorry, sir. <laughs> so bears are pretty cool because they they do have a keen sense. Like that one, just chilling in the spring, just kicking back trying to cool off in his big, thick fur. So that was interesting. It's pretty neat to watch him. And then there's times when the bears sneak up on you. Mm -hmm. I know we've had plenty of experiences of that. I know one, I will let my mom tell the other one, but this one, we had a bear at the house, and we had paper hornets, and they had... (laughs) big beautiful (laughs) nests out just behind our house and we they're really cool to look at they're amazing how they build those 
If you haven't ever seen a paper hornet, I'll find a link to a video because they have amazing architecture to their their nest. The way they build them are just really cool. And they are a wicked mean looking hornet too. So I'll I'll put a link to some pictures of that. Leah knows that they, they I was pretty fascinated with those, yeah? Yeah, very <laughs> fascinated with them. We were actually dove hunting, and this was the day before bear season opened, and we're out there shooting doves because they were everywhere. And so we kind of split off, like, okay, you go up here, and I'll go out here. And she comes along and sees the paper hornet nest, and it's all broken, and she's trying to take pictures of the inside and all really cool. All the cool. structure is really <laughs> cool inside there. <laughs> but the hornets were super mad, and I don't know why they were so angry. <laughs> and then looks up, and there's a bear right there. <laughs> I guess she snuck up on it, but it snuck up on me because she was on the hill she was on one hill, and I was on the other hill. And I didn't know. I'm just out here looking for doves. Well, she scares this bear, and it runs up and over the hill and away. Did it, Did you call me first? You or called me because I actually, I had, I was taking pictures of the structure inside this broken hornet's nest. It's really cool. The chambers inside there are awesome. And these hornets were mad. I mean, none of them were stinging me, but they were a little upset. Their house was broken. And I turn around and look, and the bear was 10 feet away from me. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I turn, I'm like, let me take a picture of the bear. So I tried to get a picture of the bear, but I had already startled him, and he was running away. And so I was trying to sneak around the hill, try to get a good picture, and he was gone. And I was like, dang it, where'd he go? And, and he actually, I had went left, and Leah had went right. And when this bear ran away, it went left, so it shouldn't theoretically be anywhere near Leah because she was on the right so (laughs) needless to say a little bit later my phone rings (laughs) yes so I'm out here just looking for doves in the oak brush kind of we got big tall ones out there and I'm just kind of cruising looking around and all of a sudden I hear like this panting and I'm like what is that and I look and it's a bear and of course I'm like the first thing I'm like oh my god, a bear, and I, like, freak out, like, oh my gosh, like, what is it doing, and, like, it was just, like, oblivious to me, and so I jump behind this tree, of course, it's, like, not even six inches (laughs) wide, and I'm, like, oh yeah, I'm hidden now, (laughs) like, not, like, maybe as thick as my shotgun was, Mm -hmm. like, might as well just stand there behind it, Mm -hmm. but I get my phone, and I call my mom, like, mom, Mom, there's a bear. And she goes, take a picture of it. And it hangs <laughs> up on me. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. And so I call Hank, and I'm like, there's a bear. And I was like, it's right in front of me. And I literally could have barely reached out and just touched it. Like, it walked right next to me, like, brushed up against me pretty much. And I was oh, like... Oh, come on. You're exaggerating now. Come on. Out. <laughs> it was an arm reach away. I couldn't pet that thing. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I told him, there's a bear. And then by the time, like, he comes out, he's got the rifle and everything because we're like, oh, my God, this bear. <laughs> And then he's like gone, he moseyed on already, and I was like, well, I can't believe you hung up on me. <laughs> and then this, then I didn't even take a picture of it because I was yeah. so worried. And like, from where I was, honestly, yeah. I thought she was looking out into the pasture and saw the bear that I had just scared. Because as I said, it ran the opposite direction. <laughs> Apparently, it, it looped around, circled back, and headed her way. But it didn't even slow down near you, did it? It just walked. It didn't even stop to say hi or anything, which Thank was goodness. okay by me. <laughs> she did have a shotgun for self-defense if necessary. I mean, yes. really, you, you could defend yourself. I don't I know what I was going to do on the other end of the phone <laughs> to save you. <laughs> but that's always a, a funny story that we, we recount that one a lot because yes. it was a scenario where a bunch of different things added up to, like, why. Everything was like... Why am I standing in the middle of these hornets that are buzzing around taking a picture of their nest? Why is this bear standing there watching me look at the hornet's nest? 
<laughs> and then he takes off when I turn to take his picture. What the heck, even? <laughs> and then, of course, he runs left, but he ends up right. I don't even know how it ended up over there. Then she said that was the day before season open. We all had bear tags. Never saw the bear again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he knew. He knew. Yeah. So that's it. One of the bear, bear encounter story that we have. Oh. We have to share one more story of hunting in the blind, the one that snuck up oh on us. Oh, my goodness. That one is a good one. Let's take a couple more of your minutes, guys, because this story <laughs> is, um, this could have made or break, made or broken? What's the word? This could have made or break Leah's career in the outdoors. But yes. <laughs> I had this hole that I was sitting, and there were so many bears that were coming in and out of this water hole. It was a really hot year, and one day, Leah didn't have school, and so she came with us to the blind, and we actually got a late start. We had errands to run. We didn't get there till like, after 10 o'clock in the morning, and we had this pop-up blind. We get up there. We're popping up the blind, not being quiet whatsoever. I mean, we just, we figured it was late. We're just going to get in here, get set up, and get ready. We pop up the blind. Leah climbs in and gets settled. She actually had her iPod and earphones on. And she's laying on the ground because it was a hot day, and she was laying on the cool ground. In by the, sh- the door. By the, by the side of the blind. And I, I set a chair in and got in there, and Hank handed me my rifle. And I was like, oh, my gosh, a huge bear. I mean, one of the biggest bears I've ever seen in our area comes to the water hole straight ahead, but it was covered by the oak brush. It had to come all the way out to the water. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we just sat down, made all this racket. Hank wasn't even in the blind yet. He was still behind the blind. And this huge bear is there. And I was just like, wow, we're not even going to be settled. I'm going to get this huge bear. And that's one of the things, a hunting tip is never follow up that far ahead of where you are in your shots. He never came out. He stepped backwards, came around the side of the blind. In, in, in front of us, he was, what, 25, 30 yards? He came around to the side of the blind, the side on which Leah was laying on the ground. And he, he came toward the oak brush, almost came out again. I maybe could have shot him through the brush, but that wouldn't have been a very clean, ethical shot. So I'm holding, I'm waiting for him to come out. Next thing, I can't see him. And we didn't even have the side windows open yet. This is how quick this happened. Next thing I hear Hank is like, he's right there. He's right there. And he's whispering. And I had a handgun and he grabbed my handgun because literally if the bear would have come through the blind, it would have been on top of Leah. So we're like, he's right there. He's right there. And we're just waiting to see this blind wiggle. I mean, obviously you don't want to shoot a bear unless it's self-defense. I mean, it was hunting season, but you can't see his vitals through the blind. So this was crazy scenario. And all the while Leah's down there on her iPod playing a game or reading, or I don't know what she was doing, but Hank and I are whispering back and forth. And finally the bear took off. It just left just like that. And we never saw that big old bear again. But as I said, that one, it could have, that could have ruined Leah's hunting forever. Honestly, if that bear had touched the blind, I I don't even want to know what would have happened in the whole scenario. I mean, it, it, it ended up like as a really cool experience. Um, I wouldn't say I was ever scared. I just really didn't want Leah to have a bad experience. And we did have guns to protect her and stuff like that. But still, that would have been a little unnerving to have the bear even touch the blind. So (laughs) there's another experience. Bears are wild animals. They're not teddy bears. I know a lot of people think of them as the, the cuddly bears we put on our beds. But they're not. They're wild animals and they can tear you apart. They have claws. Just like the video we talked about in one of our... What episode was that? 21. If you go back and listen to 21, we talked about bear attacks and you can learn a little more there. In our area, there's actually more and more hunting licenses every year because the bears are becoming overpopulated. And that's why these reports like the Colorado Springs garage and the bear breaking in the house, there's more and more reports because there's a lot of bears and we've moved into their habitat. 
it's a part of conservation. We have to manage them and also give them habitat where they can live safely. I know, I love bear hunting. It's, just, it's not just as easy as it sounds, like sit a watering hole and a bear comes in. Like You also have so many awesome memories as we've shared some with you. and. I'm sure both of us have written a couple stories about them on our websites. Oh my gosh, yes. Actually, you just saying that made me think of Canada and the bear cubs and the tree beside you. Did we talk about that in an episode yet? We're going to have to share that story later. Well, we have so many more stories to share with you guys, but I think we've carried on this episode long enough. So, thanks for listening, and we hope that you... Come back next week to hear more of our crazy hunting stories. And we hope you learn a little along the way as well, and maybe you can share some tips with us too. Yes, we always love learning new things, whether it be about hunting or fishing, anything. We love to hear from you guys. Yep. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week. See you next week.